Speak Student. Frankenstein, a la Schmuck, an introduction. So this is Frankenstein, a la Schmuck, the course. And we're here with Deb Dannon, who runs our creative and a uh, bunch of editorial stuff and like 87 other things at Schmup. So we're going to talk to Deb about Frankenstein. Uh, she's a PhD in literature and knows this stuff cold. Who was Mary Shelley? Mary Shelley uh, was 18 when this all happened. So we think of her as kind of like a young kid. But in reality, she was uh, engaging with some of the biggest intellectuals of the time. We're talking early 1800s here. Her mother was Mary Wollstonecraft, who you probably know from having written the first feminist treatise in the English language, or proto-feminist, I guess, uh, the, a vindication of the rights of woman. And then her father was William Godwin. Everyone was named William back then, so I'm just going to assume that was his <laughs> name, too. Uh, and he was just a super famous um, anarchist, atheist, kind of like crazy intellectual. So she was brought up in a family of intellectuals, and that's what was going on in her life when she wrote um, Frankenstein. It's alive, it's alive! The origin story of Frankenstein is actually really awesome. She married Percy Shelley, who was a super famous romantic poet, became Mary Shelley, and she and Percy and a bunch of other romantics like John Polidori and Lord Byron were hanging out in Switzerland. They were like on the lake, but it was, it was terrible weather, and Lord Byron was like, oh, hey, you know what we should do? We're super bored. Let's have a ghost story contest. So they all wrote ghost stories, trying to take the crown of who could write, of all these amazing romantic authors who could write uh, the best ghost story. Mary Shelley wrote Frankenstein. Started as a short story, needless to say, she won the ghost story oh. contest. She turned the story into a novel uh, in 1818. Uh, it was first published, critics did not like it. Uh, and then in 1831, it was republished uh, with the help of her husband, Percy, who kind of like fluffed up the language a bit and like changed a few things for the purposes of this course. And kind of just generally when we're talking about Frankenstein, most people are referring to that later version. Wow, that's fascinating. So Mary was 18 years old when she wrote this. Now they were typically grandmothers by age 18. Yeah, she had actually given birth twice oh by that God. point. Yeah, we'll talk about that in, in yeah. respect to a few other things for sure. Contemporaneous environment they were in. Switzerland in 1800 was what politically? A melting pot for intellectuals? Because this sounds like the all-star team, yeah. you know, of writers and creative people of that era. Yeah, they. this is kind of, again, showing how Mary Shelley was really part of the core group of romantics, and we'll talk a little bit more about romanticism, um, but she was the woman in, as you heard the names I was saying, John, Percy, yeah, etc. Yeah. She was the woman among this group of men, and that actually is incredibly important when analyzing Frankenstein to think about, you know, how does that change it, the fact that this is written from a woman's voice uh, and not a man's voice like almost everything else at the time was being written. What type of literary work is Frankenstein? Frankenstein is an interesting uh, melting pot of uh, kind of enlightenment thought, romanticism, gothicism, um, and we'll define all these terms. But um, whereas, you know, Percy Shelley and Lord Byron are really thought of as like, like definite romantic poets. When you think of like, who are the big six, you get Lord Byron, Shelley, some others that I'm not remembering, Blake. Um, and then, uh, a bunch of other people named William. Then you have uh, Mary Shelley's work, which is really just like pulls from all different angles. Um, so it is, it's very different to analyze a, a poem by, by Percy Shelley and, and Frankenstein. Although Percy Shelley did have a lot of input into Frankenstein. And that's kind of a little bit of the controversy around the book is like how much of this did Mary actually write? Uh, maybe she wrote the short story and Percy actually turned it into, uh, you know, the full novel. Interesting. So the idea of a bunch of people sitting around telling ghost stories as entertainment for an evening, a little different from society today, but that was probably normalcy in, in those days. Right? Yeah. They would entertain each other. Yeah, I mean, they had nothing else to do, so they would yeah. just write stories. Yeah, um, HBO I mean, this, wasn't there. Exactly. This is, how, this is why we have, you know, hundreds and hundreds of, you know, poems and stories from that time. Yeah. Sure. Who was Mary Shelley? Why does it help to know Shelley's background? What was the origin of Frankenstein? 